This statement paper aimed to shed light on what we currently know about FAI syndrome and labral tears. Have a listen. Hi and welcome back to PhysioTutors. Isoy et al. gathered the highest available evidence for diagnostic accuracy and management of FAI syndrome and labral tears. So let's get right into it. Diagnosis by clinical examination is challenging. On its own, clinical information isn't useful for the diagnosis. This is mostly due to the low pretest probability of the issue being FAI syndrome or a labral tear. However, the authors found that the most useful test for ruling in one of two is a restricted internal rotation in prone with 90 degrees of knee flexion and zero degrees of hip flexion. Note that this will only slightly improve the post-test probability and is thus not sufficient to make the diagnosis. Although the test has limited clinical utility on its own, the test has a low false positive rate, which is a good thing. Ruling out, however, is possible with the Fay-Deer test being negative and no restricted range of motion in the Fay-Bird test. Although the evidence was rated very low for the Fay-Deer test. The Fay-Bird test is compared to the unaffected site and distance from the lateral knee to the examination table. Studies compared the sites when the other was asymptomatic and had no FAI morphology present on x-ray, making this clinical application a bit tricky. The authors finished the examination part with the following quote. It is currently unclear whether a specific diagnosis of hip-related pain actually changes prognosis and or initial management strategy for patients, which in most cases comprises exercise-based interventions. Now, let's go over treating these patients. The authors have found that the use of a 6 to 12 week program led by a physiotherapist is a way to go in the first place. This includes hip strengthening, manual therapy, functional training and movement pattern training. However, these findings are associated with low to very low quality of evidence due to high risk of bias, wide confidence intervals and inappropriate outcome measures. A problem with the published studies is that the physiotherapeutic interventions are not well described and may thus not reflect clinical practice. Let's be clear, this is no time to pat ourselves on the back since more than half of the treated patient population still report problems following either surgery or prescribed physiotherapy with many athletes not reaching their pre-injury level of support and performance. That's it for this video, I hope you learned something today. I'm Max for PhysioTutors and I will see you in another video, bye.